Welcome to Radio Free Sunroot. This is Colibri's weekly column. November 13th, 2019. Coups for green energy added to wars for oil. The U.S. supported right-wing coup against Bolivian President Evo Morales on November 10th was a serious strike against that nation's autonomy and its people, especially its indigenous, of whom Morales was one. Such meddling has defined U.S. foreign policy in Latin America for nearly two centuries, since the Monroe Doctrine of 1823. Same song, different verse, one could say, and that's true. But each verse has different lyrics, and this one features a new element, no pun intended, lithium. While lithium is used as an ingredient in a wide variety of products, such as pharmaceuticals, industrial lubricants, desiccants, lenses, and even rocket propellants, the fastest growing application is for batteries, for electric cars. According to Bloomberg, demand for lithium could double by 2025. Bolivia's lithium reserves are believed to be the largest in the world. A conservative estimate puts their share at nearly a quarter of the world's total, though the government has claimed it to be as high as 70%. Regardless of the exact amount, Bolivia's supply is globally recognized to be significant, enough to have attracted the attention of China and Germany, among other countries. Obviously, U.S. interests in Bolivia are not about democracy, freedom, or the rule of law, as Trump disingenuously stated. They're not solely about lithium either. The socialist politics of Morales are anathema to capitalist elites the world over. Similarly, Iraq was not solely about oil. But with lithium, we're talking about a substance that could become, quote, one of the most important commodities on earth. So yes, it has some bearing. The big dream of green energy is that society will be able to just switch from one source of energy to another without changing anything fundamentally. How perversely appropriate, then, that U.S. foreign policy would not have to change fundamentally either. To wars for oil, we'll just add coups for green energy. That's not an improvement. Here our attention is called to a big blind spot in U.S. liberalism. Quote, defense spending devours over half the discretionary budget. The Pentagon is the world's largest institutional polluter. The military has approximately 800 bases around the world in over 80 countries. The facts are plain. The U.S. is a bloated empire, defiling the planet and retaining MLK's characterization of it as the greatest purveyor of violence in the world. But these facts go virtually unmentioned by Democrats, either the leadership or the rank and file. Here's this monstrous institution that's exceptionally expensive, ecocidal, and murderous, and it's off the table. That's obscene. The text of the Green New Deal, as proposed by AOC and others, does not mention military spending or activities, though both must be drastically curtailed to address the multiple environmental crises inflicting this planet. With this omission, the whole program is a non-starter. Throw it out. Start over. As far as all of this is concerned, investigative journalist Corey Morningstar hits it in the bullseye. Quote, Without anti-imperialism as a foundational building block of every social movement, without a comprehensive understanding of history and the existing power structures at work, we not only fail our brothers and sisters in the global south, we fail as a species. Not only will our social justice movements be fought in vain, all legitimate ecological movements undertaken to protect what remains of our natural world will also prove to be futile. End quote. Exactly. The stakes are high. This is no time to pussyfoot around, play dumb, or put our faith in half measures. Yet we are ignoring this central truth of our world. Further, we must take a close look at anything labeled green. That includes lithium mining, no matter who's doing it. The highest concentrations of lithium are found in the briny groundwater beneath salt flats. This water is pumped up and collected in shallow ponds where it is left to evaporate. The remaining precipitated solids are subjected to a chemical process to extract the lithium. Such salt flats exist only in arid places in the world, and the removal of the brine tends to lower surrounding water tables, affecting local wildlife and humans. Toxic chemicals are introduced into the water, soil, and air. Heaps of sludge pile up. 
plants and microorganisms are killed, and animals depart. In short, the places subjected to this industry are irrevocably wrecked. That's not green at all. These are not theoretical effects. They have been observed at places like Chile's Atacama Salt Flats, where lithium extraction has been happening for years. In an article about the environmental issues of lithium mining, Bloomberg quoted a Chilean biologist, Cristina Dorado, who said, We're fooling ourselves if we call this sustainable and green mining. The lithium fever should slow down because it's directly damaging salt flats, the ecosystem, and local communities. In a piece entitled, Lithium Mining for Green Electric Cars is Leaving a Fetid Stain on the Planet, which discussed lithium operations in South America, Raw Story concludes, quote, The idea that electric cars or anything with lithium batteries is green might be a farce. Bolivia's lithium is found on the Salar de Uyuni, a massive salt plain at over 4,000 square miles in size that is the world's largest, high in the Andes Mountains, at close to 12,000 feet in elevation. It is a place of startling beauty and the second most popular tourist attraction in Bolivia. However, it has been negatively impacted by just the limited mining activity so far. Quote, Previously, on traveling across the blinding white surface, one could expect to come across mirages, multicolored lakes, and even flamingos or geysers. This time, there are no flashes of light or oases on the world's largest salt flat, just an inestimable number of artificial lakes, clunking machinery, and workers. The new complex of laboratories, pilot plants, prospecting wells, and pools, covering 27 square kilometers of the southeastern part of the plain, situated 140 kilometers from the town of Uyuni, represents the dreams of more than a generation of politicians, a national lithium industry, end quote. Morales was calling for much bigger operations, with the main beneficiary to be the state rather than foreign corporations. We will develop a huge lithium industry, he said. Under this plan, the unique Salar de Uyuni would become a sacrifice zone, like Chile's Atacama. I abhor the fascists that ran Morales out of office, especially the ones in the U.S. We have no business messing with anyone's right to self-determination. I hope that Morales is able to return to power, as he has pledged he will do. At the same time, I wish that Morales could support his revolution some other way, just as I wished that Venezuela's Chavez could have avoided oil extraction in the service of his, just as I wish every day that we, here in the belly of the beast, could break our deadly habits, which demand the supply. In this era of ever more severe ecological disasters, our most important tasks as humans is to stop what we're doing in the interest of simple survival. In this context, I will venture to say that resource extraction like lithium mining is one of the master's tools, unfit for dismantling the master's house, even when it's called green. If you enjoyed this reading today, please consider supporting me on Patreon at patreon.com slash colibri, K-O-L-L-I-B-R-I. To find out about the other podcasting I do, visit radiofreesunroot.com.